Hi guys, today I'm here with a glass of wine and I'm here to chat to you about my Priceline Pet Hates. If you aren't from Australia, Priceline is kind of like where you would buy your cheaper end makeup. It's like the drugstore. And it's pretty much one of the biggest like drugstore where you can get all of your lower end makeup. I just felt like being a bit negative today and talking about some of the things that annoy me. Normally this is the part where people would give a spiel about how much they still love Priceline, but this is just some of the things they don't like. I'm not gonna do that because no one cares. And we're getting straight to the juicy stuff. Let's start with something that is kind of common in a few different stores, including Target, Coffee Target. And that is manky swatching products. When you want to go try a product, but it is manky AF. Or if you're walking there and you see people like applying mascara or like eyeliner and lipstick straight to their face. And you're like, oh, I really don't want to touch that. It's manky. It's a difficult place to find a staff member to sanitize the swatches for you. So that's just not good gonna happen. But yeah, I just find it really off-putting when I want to swatch products and that's a mess. And that's a mess I don't want to touch. My second pet hate is the overwhelming set out of the makeup section. No, this is gonna be like a makeup focused video because this is a beauty channel. But when you go into one of their stores, they have products all like up in lights. And the thing that I find frustrating, although I know it can't necessarily be helped and it's not necessarily their fault, but you'll have like a row of like 10 mascaras of the same mascara but like just like packed like you'll have like lots and lots of double ups and I kind of get why they do it because it means their staff don't have to like top up stock stock as much I don't know if they really have it in their budget but I prefer more of like a drawer system like at Sephora where you have your main products on display and then there's just like some sort of bit of plastic blocking it and then just behind it is like the boxes of all the products and that way when you look at the brand overall you can just see their products and it's way less overwhelming but yeah I know that's not necessarily their fault and the brands probably are the ones who are like choosing how they want their display to be. Yeah, whenever I go in there, especially to like the Rimmel London mascara section, I'm just like, someone save me, this is too much. And I'm a beauty lover. Imagine like Mel three years ago who knew pretty much nothing about makeup going into Priceline and being like, uh, help, help, help. The next is something that is a very uh, on trend topic and it's all about that brown girl makeup. I do want to say it's getting better Priceline. Your products, your brands, they're getting better. But still, I like I can't buy foundation at Priceline. It's so hard to find a match. And I know at the moment, because it's so on trend, brands are releasing more products. Like Maybelline's coming out with some darker age rewind concealers, which I love. Yeah, I'd still not really trust finding a match at Priceline, although I do, I do like that Rimmel foundation, but I'm pretty sure that's in the darkest shade they have. And my skin colour is not the darkest skin colour in Australia, so what's going on? I feel lucky that I am a bit more borderline, so I can get away with a lot of the stuff at Priceline, but still there are so many brands that, even if they go as dark as me, they go too fake tan orange, and it just does not look good. So yeah, I really struggle with complexion products at Priceline, and I would love if that was more of a thing. This does lead on to my next pet hate which is the I don't want to say whitewashing but it's I'll leave some photos up here of some of their ad campaigns and their ambassadors and I love most of the ambassadors I've chosen but I feel like you're just lacking in the very dark department like that side of the world just feels really <laughs> unrepresented like where is the beautiful indian skin tone the african skin tone where is it where is the very pale european skin tone where is it here are some photos you'll see like i love the fact they have included poe she is lovely but also the photos just the editing and the styling makes all of her skin color look really similar some of the ad campaigns just they're lacking the color and I can understand why it's a thing. Price line their market is probably more towards Caucasian skin tone, even more towards like a more mature woman in Australia. But they are such a powerhouse. They have such control over the market. And I'd love for them just to be stepping up and saying, these lighter beige shades are not what defines beauty. And they have such power. And I'd love if they were the ones who are being the front runners in saying that if you have darker skin tone, you don't have to go to Bobby Brown. You don't have to go to Mac. 
you are welcome at Priceline too and they will have products for you and for your skin tone. You know, it's it's hard and a girl a girl can dream. Something that I could honestly rant about, but I don't want to because I know it may not necessarily be Priceline's fault, but I do feel like they are still a player in this game and that is expensive makeup products at Priceline. And I'm talking MAC Cosmetics level prices for Priceline products. Like that doesn't even make any sense. When Priceline are selling mascaras for, get this, $30, 30 Australian dollars, $28, $25, even $20. That's ridiculous. You can go to Mecca and buy a high-end mascara for $30. What is going on? I feel like the only brands keeping it real are Rimmel and Essence. Essence is around the $5 mark and Rimmel is around the $10 mark for mascaras. But what's going on with these other brands? Calm down, people. You are not at Mecca. You're more than welcome to slow down the new releases and focus on lowering your prices a little without pumping out these new new limited edition releases with fancy packaging. Let's just keep it real. Remember your roots. Also, I find the makeup brushes at Priceline are particularly overpriced. Get this, a manicure big bronzy powder brush is $45 from Priceline. $45. Think about what you could buy for $45 from Sephora or from Mecca. Let's look at also the Real Techniques powder brush. $28. But if you go to iHerb, you can get that same brush for $13. A bang. A bang. A dang. Let's move on from that topic before I get too carried away. My last pet peeve is the huge ridiculous Priceline gift with purchase bag things. I have been sucked in myself and have bought a couple in the past and I barely ended up using 20% of the products I got. It just like added a clutter to my collection. Half of it was like samples and then I just like I didn't use it. It was so unpersonalized that I couldn't even use it myself and I tended to buy more products than I needed so I could get up to the value I needed to get that bag and it just wasn't worth it. And I'm the kind of person who likes using what I buy. Like it could be worth it if you see that in the bag there are products you actually need and will use within like a couple years and the value of the items that you'll actually use is greater than the, the money that you're gonna pay sure that's a good deal also hurts my heart though to have you know 80% of the products that I'm not gonna use and to just throw them away I could also try and palm them off to friends but like if I don't want it the friends probably not gonna want it maybe they will maybe they won't it's just like ugh. I just don't like that it's encouraging this consumerism collect every Everything very kind of like gluttonous and hoarding and just like we don't need this huge collections of stuff that we never use and I feel like those bags encourage it I know it'd be worse off for them but I would prefer if they had smaller more curated bags you could choose from and there are a much smaller price point that you had to spend up to I feel like a lot of people I watch online at the moment are all about going on low buys and decluttering and like shopping their stash appreciating the collection they have and we're really trying to fight against this really consumeristic ridiculous culture in the beauty community of just having lots of crap. That seems like a good point to end the video. If you enjoyed this kind of chatty, honest, who gives a poop video, let me know in the comments because I can do more. If you don't like it, I can go back to the huge content. Up to you guys. I like to mix it up here and keep it real. Make sure you subscribe because YouTube wants to take away the small money I have. And if they get to a thousand subscribers, they're not going to do that. So if you subscribe, thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.